Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Good evening. A very warm welcome to the mind expanding, pulse quickening, inhibition killing late night large. With two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high power blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, a quarter of tequila, a quart of rum, a case of Budweiser, a pint of raw ether and two dozen apples is me, Dr. Bliss, and main only the peanuts is my attorney, Mike Large. Wonderful introduction as ever. Good evening. Mike, what's tonight's late night large theme on? Narcotics. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes. We're, we're discussing <coughs> drugs of the leisure variety here. Prohibited substances as opposed to prescription. Mike, normally we enter into late night large in a very easy and jocular way, but uh, I felt like we should really get root deep in the uh, broken syringes and... Uh, I, I, I do appreciate getting root deep. Always. All the way to the plums, you know. <laughs> so what I was going to open by Come asking home, Mike, go on. What, what, what's your particular perspective on recreational drugs? Do you have a problem with them? Each to their own, Aaron. Do you know what I mean? I'm fairly open-minded. Do you experiment with recreational drugs? Absolutely not. Never in my life. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> d- d- <coughs> Despite my appearance <laughs> and the amount of times I've been asked, probably due to my appearance, uh, if I knew where to <laughs> purchase narcotics, I have very little experience either. We're very good boys. So, do you think are you a live, live and let live type of character? I mean, for instance, if 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 a friend you know experiments regularly, if it's a regular part of their routine, say their weekend routine, do you have a problem with that? Not at all. No. No. Fair play to them. <laughs> fair play to them. <coughs> no, I know. Yeah, you know, I. It depends what it is, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I guess there's a if, there's yeah, a big difference in knowing a lovable stoner if, and a hopeless yeah. skaghead. If a friend of mine was doing something that I thought was going to hurt them or harm them or have some long-term negative effects, then yes, I would have a problem with it. Yeah, okay. So let me ask you this. What's your stance what's on... What's going on? <laughs> what's your stance on prohibition? What do you mean, what's my stance on it? Do you think it's worked? Do you think outlawing... Recreational drugs has worked. Well, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of course so it hasn't. Okay. <laughs> Glad we come to the same conclusion. So, what I was going to ask you is, uh, would you would you take another route to deal with this particular? I don't know whether we call it problem issue. I'm I'm always open to taking another route. Um, I'll uh, explore any avenue open to me. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> what what would your alternative be to total prohibition of recreational drugs? Make everything legal. Are you being serious here? Is it, all of it legal. It is a serious point. Make would, it all would, legal. Would you legalise all drugs? Yeah. People kill themselves, they kill themselves. Right. Give, Make, well, give, at least give me a reasoning for you saying that, because I feel like you're just like, you're pulling my chain here. I'll pull you something. No, I... Uh, it would make it safer. Yeah. People, you know, if they have to go and to dodgy places to dodgy people to get dodgy substances, you know, that you don't know what that's mixed with, what it's cut with, or anything, do you? Whereas if it's, you know, if it's all above board and kosher and whatnot, then 
you know, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be safer, isn't it? Well, let me nail my colours to the mast. Of course, I endorse legalisation of all drugs as well. Of course, <laughs> uh, and obviously that would bring them, I guess, under state control, and then you could obviously tax them as well. My like cigarettes. Yeah. Well, exactly. You could like whack tax on them. Obviously, if you wanted to keep the classifications as they are, then obviously you tax class A very heavily, class B moderately and Class C probably quite lightly. But, you know, there is an argument as to, you know, we're, we're always told, you know, oh, the government should get too involved, consenting adults and what have you. We shouldn't keep trying to tell people what to do, you know, as in with eating too much junk food or smoking cigarettes or drinking too much alcohol. Why is recreational drugs different? If it's, a, if it's a, an adult of, uh, of, a, of a decent age... When I say an adult, I mean like 21 plus, you'd suggest. Know what they're doing. Know the risks that they're taking about themselves. Why not let them buy in an open and safe environment? <laughs> Pay tax on it. End of the day, if they if they want to do that, surely it's, you know, it's an adult decision. It's not like it's amazingly hard to get hold of stuff anyway, is it? So, you know... <coughs> um, you know, making it illegal, as, as a lot of these substances currently are. Does it just drive yeah. it underground, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it just makes it less safe. Well, let's you know, face if people, it. If people want to get their hands on something, no matter pretty much what it is, yeah. they can get their hands on it. So, yeah, the argument is, if people can get hold of it already... You're hearing that, people, I can hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to endorse that. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, if people if people can get hold of these substances already, the argument is, why not turn it to the benefit of everyone and also to themselves? Because you're mm. getting taxation and you're also improving, you know, uh, you're making the drugs cleaner. You, you don't know what some asshole's cutting it with. I Broken glass, pubic hair. I, I wonder, as a percentage, what people, a uh, percentage of people that take kind of you know, recreational drugs or whatever... Mm what kind of percentage then go on to develop an issue because of it like for example mm. you you have like say people obviously you know adults that drink alcohol and then what percentage go you know, have a alcohol problem because of it yeah I mean it's, that's probably really I mean I guess that's probably a low percent I mean take all the people you know yeah that, that drink alcohol and then how many of them are actually alcoholics actually are alcoholics I mean you Everyone knows a few. Everyone yeah, knows a few. But think of that as percentage of everyone you know yeah, that recreationally exactly. drinks. And there is an argument as well that humans are compulsive creatures. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we, we tend to look for things to get addicted to. What I'm saying is, would that be a similar kind of percentage with people that take recreational drugs? Would they have the negative side effects that can occur? Mm. Would, would that be a similar percentage of, of people having to deal with that? I don't know. Just something to think about. You think it'd probably be a pretty fractional percentage of people who experiment with recreational drugs actually develop a problem? Yeah. I mean, drugs are a lot more of a taboo subject and than alcohol. Therefore, people know a lot less about it. Like, And, you know, you probably know, you probably all know a lot of people that are actually using recreational drugs that you don't know about. Yeah. Now, can I just uh, can I just jump in, interject, because I read an article the other day, actually, that Hit said... Me. Unfortunately, I can't remember the percentage, but it was very high. A large majority of, obviously, between generally the ages of 18 and 34, of the workforce actually go to work with drugs in their system. So you, you're talking about the majority of the young workforce are actually on drugs while they're at work. I'm not suggesting they all, like, you know, they have coke with their Frosties or Shooting whatever. up in the toilets. Yeah, <laughs> but they have traces still in their system. We can only estimate, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of them probably smoke a joint either after work to bring them down or maybe in their lunch hour, whatever. Is it any different to me turning up to work pissed in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, I, I obviously don't endorse that, but if you do turn up drunk to work, then... I don't know. Is that your? Is that how you roll? 
of course I don't do things like that. No. It was a, a joke. Yeah. Hanging so, out by So us. you're saying it's the, it's the same kind of thing as a hangover? No. Well, it's not, is it? Why is it not? I mean, after all, alcohol is an addictive drug just like the rest. So the only difference that we can see is legality. Some might argue a lot more addictive than most recreational drugs. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're talking recreational drugs, you're probably not talking you well you're not talking about things like heroin are you so i mean recreational drugs i'd say that smoking for example yeah. of all of all of all recreational drugs and you include alcohol and and cigarettes into that there and tobacco then you know I, I, tobacco's got to be the the most addictive i'd have thought probably it must be okay yeah if you look at proportionally the amount of people you know who smoke and proportionally, the amount of people you know who drink, how many of those drinkers are alcoholics? You just said yourself, a small percentage. Hmm. You, I mean, you probably wouldn't even say a quarter. How, how many smokers, if they have to go a how day without smokers, a fag, start exactly, crying about it? How many smokers can cope more than a day without a cigarette? Very few. Yeah, this is true. But the problem with addiction to cigarettes, or addiction to anything, I guess, but tobacco particularly, is people look for a reason to smoke mm. oh, I've they had say, a hard day at work yeah I, I smoke I smoke because my stress levels are high I smoke because oh someone's just died I smoke because yeah like you say I, I think I'm going to lose my job you know I, I just need to get me through this and you know what you're actually saying is I, I need this substance to control my mood and it's quite sad and it, and it is a horrible addiction just like many others okay obviously it's not quite as bad as heroin addiction mm. no. but you know, that's the thing that changes the game, because what I was going to say is, me personally, I'm the kind of person, and obviously, by my appearance, you'd probably think that this was an obvious one, I personally think everyone should try as many drugs as possible in their lifetime. And obviously addiction is the worst thing that can happen, because, again, just my own opinion, kiddies, drugs can be a wonderful thing to opening your mind to new experiences. As soon as you then go down a path where you're routinely using it it's not new anymore you're not in control it's in control and as we know from many many people's sad tragic stories the more you take recreational narcotics the more they take control of you the less pleasure you get from them and in the end it becomes a crutch instead of something positive there well there's different stages on there i mean i mean that you get like you were just saying i mean there's fancying something whatever you know a bit of something to liven up a night out and there's like wanting it like I really want this I'm gonna go out of my way to get it and then there's need in it mm. and you know once you get to that stage it's it's you really seriously need help why do you take drugs Mike narcotics why do you take the um, recreational drugs why would it's not you personally a, <laughs> a person why would they feel obliged to why would one? Not obliged, obviously. Not obliged to. Yeah. <laughs> I feel obliged. Well, maybe peer pressure. I just feel obliged. I just feel obliged to do it. <laughs> no. Um, well, liven up a weekend. Or how? How would it? Come on, we're talking about someone who's completely okay. uninitiated in that world. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Well, for a start, different drugs have different effects on different people. Okay. Someone like myself. Yeah. Who can do things sober that most people wouldn't dream of doing drunk <laughs> wouldn't necessarily need to take something to bring them out of their shell but sometimes people take things to, okay. to bring them out of their shell oh, right, okay. yeah, you know that's, what, what that's what I was talking about so okay that's that's our first checkpoint so you're saying that people take some drugs obviously to lower their inhibitions lower their inhibitions make them more social someone creatures. who's normally quite quiet and happy to just be there but remain fairly anonymous would you know do something and then yeah and the most obvious and the, the most obvious way they might do talk that talk to anyone yeah the most obvious way that you could imagine them doing that is obviously the legal recreational drug of choice alcohol but why else might people choose to take narcotics keep themselves up they're going on a binge massive weekend <laughs> right decided they're not going to sleep keep okay. themselves up keep themselves wired yeah keep themselves wired okay. buzzing going yeah for, for dancing and, and yeah. socialising and just having a party that's it okay 
Anything else? What? I don't know. Calm down. Calm down? Yeah, relax. Why would you need relax. to be calmed down? Very various reasons. Why would anyone ever need to be calmed down? There's loads of fucking reasons why someone might need to be calmed down okay. or relax. Okay, easy tiger. We have stimulants. Like you were saying, pick people up, make their heart race, keep them alert and effective. Get them wired. Night. Get them wired. Depressants. Rushing opposite. out a mad one. Oh, so, yeah. so. <laughs> Depressants, opposite. Bring people down, calm them down, soothe them. Chillax. Should like, uh, make you know, make them potentially feel numb and and just generally at peace with the world without necessarily being asleep. Hallucinogens, obviously, is the third category, which is my personal favourite category, and that's obviously to bend reality in a person's mind, allow them to see things that don't exist. Basically to illustrate their own imagination in front of their own eyes yeah open their mind so those are the three main categories I mean let's talk about a few substances that might be found in those Mike first of all stimulants yeah okay so yeah. We, we see some of the old favourites here ecstasy speed crystal meth uh, cocaine crack fentamine which I'm not particularly familiar with but a lot of amphetamines in there. Yeah. Are you familiar with many of these? Because uh, stimulants, most of them are pill-based, aren't they? Okay. Because stimulants are generally used in a setting where, let's face it, you're partying. So it, a nightclub is a is an obvious scenario that you might expect to see those kind of things pushed. <laughs> and if anyone is at all tempted... Um, by our show first of all congratulations I'm, I'm glad you're influenced by our show to that degree crystal meth is a horrible drug I've never known anyone on crystal meth I've never taken it myself I'm glad to say but I've seen many many case studies of people on crystal meth nasty shit it tends to rot your teeth ruin your skin uh, and age you prematurely in a very short period the reason, uh, apparently the main reason that people get into crystal meth is it's an incredible, uh, it's incredible for one's libido, especially, especially women, because obviously men don't need much provoking, but, uh, especially me, yeah, it, it gets you in the mood for a gangbang, that kind of thing, it's, it's like, completely your libido goes out of control, so yeah, it could be fun, but don't even experiment with crystal meth, it's a horrible drug. I've what happened to Mr. Try Everything once? Yeah, except uh, crystal meth, and maybe except heroin. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. Don't don't try those two. It's a slippery slope. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. So depressants, Mike. We're looking at things like obviously yeah. cannabis. Uh, GHB, inhalants, heroin, morphine, codeine, methadone, buprenorphine, <laughs> uh, pethidine, delauded, capanol, MS content. I haven't really heard of many of them, but yeah, alcohol, yeah. obviously. Hallucinogens, obviously, we have uh, lysergic acid, dithylamide, or LSD, psilocybin in magic mushrooms, PCP, which is angel dust. Ketamine and mescaline. Donkey dust. <laughs> donkey dust. Ketamine. Donkey oh, dust. Brilliant. Brilliant street slang there. So yeah, Mike, you have, you ever, have you ever sold any uh, PCPs to school children? I have, actually. Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. As we were saying, Mike, you not heard of scopolamine? No. Okay. Uh, I believe it's got some nasty nickname like the devil's something or other. Anyway, scopolamine is well known for not only lowering inhibitions, but it can actually reduce someone to nothing more than a walking zombie. It actually eliminates willpower. Uh, criminals have been known to uh, very surreptitiously influence people by, say, carrying a newspaper and blowing it into someone's face. It only needs that kind of contact and the person then loses all of their own willpower so you can they can bec basically become highly suggestive suggesting them that it's great to go back to their place to steal all their possessions so that's I guess 
you you probably must have assumed that I had lots of knowledge of this. <laughs> I, you probably were guessing that's how I get all the girls following me around. Uh, I no, don't, we know that's the lynx effect, isn't it, Mike? No, it's my massive schlong. <laughs> There are drugs that you, you know, personal, let's say, personal influence. You want to make yourself feel more confident, to feel more energetic, to, to make you feel more numb. But then there are also drugs that are specifically used to harm other people. You know, roofies, scopolamine, these kind of things that influence other people's behaviour negatively. Yeah. Well, negatively for them. <laughs> Mike, I, I don't ever want to see that kind of leering smile you gave when I said <laughs> Rufy's. So, Mike, I thought we'd uh, we thought I thought we'd round off this show with uh, testing your knowledge on some street names. I see how street you are. Uh-huh. See, now I've already told you that I'm going to express no knowledge towards any drugs for fear of being accused of having experience myself. No, no, of course not. Gonna be what, what, what's horse? What's horse? Yeah. What, what would I be referring to if I, if I said I, I fancied scoring some horse? I don't bloody know. Ketamine? <laughs> Mike, it's heroin. We could have talked all night about narcotics, but we're going to cut it off short. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. I love you. Late night large and Denton on air do not endorse the use of drugs at all. <laughs>